Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University and Killmonger, issue number one of five. Let's get into who made this comic book so we can start talking about the comic book. By the way, I like the comic book. <laughs> All right, so let's get moving. Uh, this is By Any Means, part one of five. Writer, Brian Hill. Art and cover, Juan Ferreira. Letters, uh, VCs, Joe Sabino. And uh, we got a couple of variant cover artists, Jason Pearson, Larry Stroman, Mark Morales, and Jason Keith. The logo is by Adam Del Rey. All right, first off, Juan Ferreira. Wow, freaking awesome job. All right, I'm not going to sit here and blow smoke up your butt and say that this is the best art I've ever seen in my life because it's not. But that, 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 that Juan did this art, all of the art, pencils, inks, colors, and the cover all by himself. This is Phil Noto level stuff right here, man. This is beautiful beautiful all right like this work this artwork even if i heard somebody say ah the art is mediocre i don't want to talk to you bud because you are not paying attention to how gorgeous this comic book really is anyways let's get started with the story itself i mean, just sorry no 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 i'm not finished i'm not finished talking about the art really quick just the idea that you look and you see multiple art stories in here multiple and 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 i didn't actually mean to say uh art stories but i'm gonna double down on that that's exactly what it is the art is all telling a story in here and it's gorgeous you see him having flashbacks the art looks different you see the regular story clearly that's the consistent art you see him uh in the spiritual world in the recesses of his mind that's different art entirely Everything that happens in here, it's all different art. One person did that. I want to emphasize that. One person did that. Don't, don't insult this art, man, because you cannot do better. I don't care who you are. This is gorgeous art in here. Okay, so we start off with um, Njikata. He's I think he's going by Eric Killmonger at this point. He should, yeah, he should be. Anyway, he's at uh, MIT. <laughs> kids kids sorry my kids are sick my kid both of my kids i was up all night watching my kids that's why very few comic book reviews out this uh this morning but now they're okay now they're okay <laughs> somehow they're okay i'm up all night with these knuckleheads but now they're okay so yeah they're gonna be screaming all throughout this it is what it is um anyway massachusetts institute of technology basically mit um he's at mit and what's happening here is he's with this uh, I feel like a student counselor, whoever the hell she is. Um, what do you call it? And um, uh, she's, she's offering jobs. Like, listen, I have multiple jobs. A lot of people want your mind. You're a brilliant person. Now, what's she doing here? What she's basically doing is the same thing that everybody else has been doing ever since he was uh, a kid. All right. Uh, and Jakarta is a smart guy. I know a lot of people, you know, they see, you see the comic book and you don't really read into the comic books a lot. You just like, oh, he's a ridiculously huge guy. You see the movie like, oh yeah, he's a, he's a really tough guy. He's big, he's strong, you know, saying, um, Michael B. Jordan, he's a tough guy's got all those kills, you know, the, you know, the, 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 the what is it called? The underskin body piercings. I don't know what they're called. Anyway, um, all that stuff, right? Mm. Remember the origin of Eric Killmonger, as it was explained later. This dude was brilliant, brilliant. And the main way he was able to get the attention of uh, Black Panther in order to find his way back home was by uh, actually being as smart as he was. So, yeah, he was brilliant. He was very well educated. He was an academic. He was an academic. Um, and here, this is just re-solidification of who he is. But this is the last thing in the world that he, excuse me, that he needs. And I mean that more than what uh, Njikata actually thinks. Uh, Eric Killmonger doesn't need to hear that he's smart. He's been told this his whole life. So this is like, psh, whatever. He just wants to sleep with this girl. <laughs> hey, man, don't hate the player. Hate the game. So um, what do you call it? Anyway, he, uh, you're, you're going to see a lot of hatred in him he calls her a colonizer and it's so funny to me that like this is a thing that that people actually get upset over how dare you um well let's just look at history <laughs> sorry and I, and I hate to say it as, as a sicilian like i'm not even a mainlander italian you know what i'm saying they were the real freaking colonizers they colonized us <laughs> you know what i'm saying but but i get it i get it it is what it is it is what it is and at the end of the day it's only words, right? It's just free speech. So anyway, uh, this is just 
one of many ways you get to see this cat's anger. This guy is so angry at the world. He hates the world. Everything owes him. Not just everybody. Everything owes him in his mind, in his perspective. That's who he is. And this comic book really drives that home. And as smart as he is, he's really dumb. At one point, he get, he's trying to kill Ulysses Claw. And mind you, this is the comic book version of Ulysses Claw. So you're going to have to go and read the back of the book. There's um, uh, the letters section. Excuse me, there's the letters section here. And this is the first issue, so I don't mind revealing the last page on here. This is gorgeous. God, this is gorgeous. And again, look at the difference in the art style. But um, what do you call it? Brian Hill actually gives a, uh, a sermon in the back. He just gives uh, a bit of personal life story in there. And I appreciate that. One of the things that he says in there is, um, what do you call it? That this is a blend of the movie version and the comic book version. Thank you. Thank you. Um, besides opening up and, and getting personal, which he does, you know, so he does all the time online. Uh, he, is, he is letting us know that this is not going to be something that we can follow with one line of thinking. We've kind of got to have a duality level of thinking, okay? So you got the left side of the road, let's say that's the comic book verse, and then you got the right side of the road, and that's the movie verse. Eh, you're going to be walking a fine line in the middle. Not even a fine line. You've actually got the entire highway. The entire highway. The left side, the right side, and everything in between. So there's going to be a whole lot of leeway through this. You know what I'm saying? Um, and just the idea that he lets us know that that's what, he, that's what we're reading. I'm good, man. Dude, I don't care if it's uh, Batman in a tutu doing the Watutsi. I don't even know what the hell the Watutsi is. I know it's a dance of some sort. I think. I think it's a dance. The point is... If he's doing all that stuff and somebody says, hey, just for the sake of conversation, head cannon aside, this is not in continuity. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. <sighs> Let me start. <laughs> okay, I'll go back to reading now. I'm good. Um, <laughs> that's what this comic book does for us. And that's much appreciated. Anyway, so he's off trying to assassinate Claw. And he gets stopped. And I like this team that stops him. There's basically a kill team that's going to stop him. And again, go ahead. Complain about this gorgeous art, man. Oof, man. And the panel layouts, too. I got to give that up also, man. The panel layouts, the, pa the page layouts, beautiful. So um, I'm going to keep coming back to that. I'm going to try not to too much. But anyway, um, he meets up with this kill crew who puts him in front of Wilson Fisk, the kingpin. Oh, oh, things just got deep. Now, what did I just say that, that he's constantly been being told his entire life? He, he, he's, his whole life, all right, by his kidnappers, by the people who raised him, by the people who, who educated him. Everybody always tell him, you got a brilliant mind. You're such a smart person. You're like the smartest person I know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But what does he do? The kingpin says something to the effect of, should I kill you or should I let you go? And, King, and, and this knucklehead in front of the kingpin, you might say, oh, but he doesn't know who the kingpin is. So you came to a city and you didn't do your research? You came to the city to assassinate someone and you didn't do your research before you came in? Bud, in the military, we learned better than that. And this guy's going to be CIA or something to that effect. He's going he's gonna to think he's so smart. You damn well better do your research. <laughs> like, that's just not even hard, man. That's not even difficult. So anyway... Um, oh, especially if we found out that he was recently the frickin' mayor of New York. <laughs> Again, we're outside of that continuity. So he goes and says, in front of the people who captured him, who have his life in his hands, and in front of Wilson effing Fisk, who could probably beat this guy unconscious. Probably. Maybe. We'll see. We might see. I'd like to see. He says, I'm the smartest man in this room. <laughs> you know, there's a saying, there's an idiom in China it says um, uh, the compliment is poison, especially from the boss. Uh, China has a, a, a history, for the most part, of not complimenting the people who work for them. Because if you do, it's like poisoning. And they start thinking, 
Yeah, man. You know, I, I am. The boss just said I'm really good and you're an underboss. So how dare you think that, you know, you're going to tell me what to do. I, I, I'm a good worker. All right. And I've been recognized. And then all of a sudden you start to get a little bit too big for your britches. And well, then you're giving speeches in front of your school naked. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Anyway, <laughs> this knucklehead goes and says that to the kingpin. Yeah, if this cat would have gotten a bullet in his head at this point, I'm just like, <laughs> I, I, I don't think that people necessarily deserve to die, all right? but but some people do it to themselves. <laughs> some people pull their own trigger. <laughs> and like, dude, no. No, you just did not. Anyway, he's got a hard time understanding the way that the politics of the underworld work. And... That's interesting to me. What's also interesting to me is that this knucklehead who thinks he's so smart goes and holds a, a gun that way. Dude, let me tell you something, okay? The best thing I could say about holding a gun this way, a pistol, a, you know, or a, um, any kind of a sidearm that way, is that it's just a, it, it limits uh, my options of disarming it. <laughs> but understand, if you're close enough for someone to disarm you with, when you've got a distance weapon, you're not that, you're not the smartest person in the room. And that's just the end of the conversation. So we have a huge juxtaposition in this version of Killmonger that we're being given. He is an academic and being told that you're so smart your whole life, you start thinking that applies to everything as opposed to understanding that you're not in a bubble, you're in a tunnel. And there's a difference because the bubble could be as big or as as little as it needs to be. The earth is technically within a bubble. It's called an atmosphere. Um, don't don't give me flat earth. Oh, God, don't give me flat earth series. But the point is that, you know, the, the a bubble could be as big as it needs. But a tunnel, you're limited. Now, I don't care how fat it is. You're still only talking about two dimensional at best, at best. So, yes, Eric Killmonger is very smart, but damn, he's got a whole lot to learn about the rest of the world. <laughs> he just, you know, you're smart in your field, in your category, kiddo, but you've taken a huge step outside of whatever he's learning at MIT. I would imagine it's engineering. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's their speciality. I would imagine <laughs> that he's... Oh, man. So, yeah, when when you get a little bit too big for your britches, you know, the, the whole saying of, yeah, you're a, you're a big fish in a small pond. Man, when you get set in the ocean, all of a sudden you start to see that there's a whole new level of, of beast out there. Wow. Anyway, this was a fantastic comic book. I love the journey that we're getting for Killmonger. He's learning a lot. I'm afraid that he is going to be stupid and he is going to turn around and try and kill these people who are trying to help him, who are giving him multiple chances. Um, I don't remember if I said this or not before, but I was thinking about this the entire time I was reading this comic book. I was thinking to myself, you know, it's funny because all of these chances that he's getting, they're actually all the same chance. Think about that. When you read this comic book, think about that. All these different chances he's getting, these second chances he's getting at not dying, they're actually all the same chance. And I wonder if he's smart enough to realize that. <laughs> this is a really good book, man. And again, check out the letter in the back of the book because that helps with the uh, understanding a whole lot. Solid issue, man. Solid issue. And dude, there's no way I'm not reading the other four issues at this point. Done and done. All right, guys, that's it for me. Professor Bill, Comic Book University, class dismissed. It's freaking kids. <laughs>